uh, these emblems here. And uh, for those that are at home, if you can get, I uh, don't know whether we, we alerted you about this, uh, but for those who are at home, um, let me see. If you can get up, we'll wait on you. You can get a piece of bread. Wait, wait, Joel, wait, hold on first. Yeah, so uh, um, for those who are at home, if you can get a piece of bread and uh, maybe a cup of juice uh, so that we can partake together, we are ready. We are gonna, we are gonna, we are gonna, going to do so here in church. And uh, so those of you who are at home, uh, you can take, uh, we'll give you some time to take a piece of bread and uh, if you can, and uh, a cup of juice, and then we are going to partake of the emblems together. Now, the Bible talks, Paul admonishing the church in Corinth about partaking of the, of the table of the Lord, the Holy Communion. Uh, you know, this was, this was the last ordinance, I would call it, you know, the last supper when the Lord came together with his disciples. He wanted to do something that will be remembered. And he wanted them to remember what he was just about to do being the, the uh, eternal sacrifice for the whole world. And so he, he, he came to, they came together and they broke bread together. But it was, this was not just like any other dinner, but it was a breaking of the bread that we see here. And actually this, this, this uh, emblems that we have in front of us are just emblems of what, what he did on that, uh, uh, on that very uh, 2000 years ago that his body was, gonna, was going to be the bread and that he would be crushed on the cross and then blood will come out of his body. And so through the, the, uh, the, the, the pouring out of his blood, the shedding of his blood, uh, there would be remission of sin. And so that is exactly what it meant, you know, uh, for their breaking, you know, having this dinner. So the bread, the bread that was being broken, it re represented the crushing, the breaking, the toying, torn, you know, his body being torn, torn apart by the lashes and, and, and the cruelty, you know, that was, uh, uh, that he endured even through the process of the cross and that uh, he endured that for our own sake. Remember, we were the ones who were supposed to be on that old ragged cross, but Jesus was the ultimate uh, sacrifice that took away the sins of the world. And so he told us, he admonished the church to be doing this, as often as we may to remember what he did, amen? And so that's why we, we have Holy Communion uh, to remember even for generations to come. And you know what, we can, all, we can also take Holy Communion in our homes. You can gather together with your family, get us a piece of bread and a cup of juice. And you know, you can have Holy Communion there. You can actually have, have Holy Communion by yourself, praise the Lord. You know, you can have a bread and a piece, I mean, a, a, a little cup that will present the, the blood of Jesus and the Lord will just honor it as he would honor. Well, you know, as we come here in church. So we are going to give thanks uh, for the cup and for the bread. And then I'm gonna ask uh, to just distribute this cup and, and the bread to us here in the church. And back at home, I know by now, maybe you have that bread and we can partake it together. Let us give thanks right now. Heavenly Father, we are thankful. It is a great honor. The Lord, you're reminding us uh, about this emblems, the Holy Communion, the table of the Lord. And Father God, I know that even as Paul admonished the, the Corinthian, the church in Corinth, to uh, search themselves and to not take the, the, the Holy Communion in an unworthy way, we also do it the same here, Lord. We, we ask you to search our hearts, O oh Lord, we forgive those who have hurt us. We, we ask you, Lord, even to release us even from, uh, from any condemnation of any kind that will prevent us, Lord, even from partaking this table in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we partake of this emblems, Father, let them remind us of what happened 2,000 years ago when your body was crucified on the cross and when blood came out, Lord, and then it was declared that no, uh, there, was, there would not be by the blood of Jesus. And that's why we come here, Lord, even to partake of this emblems, to be reminded, Lord, to proclaim you are dead until you come, O oh Lord, to other generations, to our children, to our grandchildren, to generations that will come so that they may know what happened, the event that took place 2,000 years ago uh, it took place so that we all can be re, uh, re, uh, restored back to the Father. 
And Father, we give you praise. We honor your name. Thank you so much for the bread. We also thank you, Lord, even for the cup. And this we pray in Jesus' name. And we all said amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask our brother Joel uh, to partake of the cup. Once you get it, you can separate it with the kind of cup we have. It has bread and it has the cup. So try to separate it. And you at home, you can do the same. Try to get a piece of bread so that we can all partake it together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we distribute it, I don't know whether Sister Lorraine, you have that song, Oh, the Blood of Jesus, um, or oh, oh, the Blood that, um, uh, you know, old, old, old Ragged Cross. I don't know whether you have any of that song. If, if you don't have it, that's still okay. Yes, that's, that's the one. I hope, thank you so much, Sister Lorraine. So we uh, think, I hope everybody has their bread and they have their cup. And so we are gonna, we are, we are gonna start uh, to partake of the bread together. Uh, so if you're ready, we can partake of this bread together. Let's do it right now. Thank you, Lord. And just as we uh, spoke earlier, you know, after after dinner, they also brought the cup together, and this is this this signifies the blood of the new covenant that was shed for me and you, and so we are also going to partake it together at this point. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Joel. I don't know whether you can help also pick up. All right, I hope you also participated it uh, together as a family back at home, uh, there in, at home. And I hope, uh, you know, we do this, this as often as we may so that we can proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And again, I just want to remind you that you can partake of this at home, you know, as often as you may. And the Lord is going to bless you. We're going to hear the word of the Lord right now. Um, uh, let me grab my Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I can only hear two or three people. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Are you happy this morning? Amen. I'm excited to be in the presence of the Lord. It is always a joy for us to be together, to come together to the house of the Lord. Uh, the Lord has sustained each one of us, and we don't take that for granted. Praise the Lord. I also bring greetings to those of you who are at home. Uh, I just want to, uh, uh, you know, hope that you had, you had a great week, and this is the day the Lord has made. I just want to bring uh, a message that I call the necessity of bearing fruit as a Christian believer. The necessity of bearing fruit as a Christian believer. You know, many times we talk about bearing fruit and I don't know whether we, what, you know, whether we understand what it means or how significant it is to bear fruit as Christian believers. And when I was thinking about this, you know, what I was just about to come and share, you know, uh, I, I mean, I had flashbacks of memories of what, um, uh, of so, so many things about the Lord ex expect, expects from us in as far as bearing fruits is concerned, you know, we, we've had people say that you shall know them, you know, by the fruits that they bear, praise the Lord. You know, uh, in the natural as well, you know, uh, a farmer, when a farmer sets to grow plants, you know, or to sow plants in his garden, you know, he may be doing that maybe so that he can uh, get uh, a harvest for his, for his food, or he can be doing it so that he can um, you know, commercially, so that he can uh, get a, a, you know, the byproduct you would sell uh, for a profit. So the, the moment the farmer sows seeds into the ground, his eye or his mind is on the harvest, amen? And so he does what he is supposed to do. He tills the land, he prepares grain, he makes sure that the grain that he has are quality seeds, not just seeds that have been collected anywhere, and then he makes sure that the, the land and the ground is, is well tilled. And uh, he also, you know, prays and hopes that the Lord is going to send the rain. He 
puts the seeds on the ground and he waits, praise the Lord. Now what happens is the Lord's uh, uh, power takes over and grows that seed to whereby it, it becomes a plant and it takes time, it takes time. You know, it doesn't, he doesn't just sow that seed into the ground the next day to come and expect a harvest, but it takes time. But where, while the conditions are, is necessary, at the end of the, the season, when that plant is supposed to, to, be, to mature up, you know, he is so happy when he goes into his farm and realizes that there's a fruit on every plant that he planted, praise the Lord. So the moment that he sows those seeds into the ground, his eye is on the, is on the harvest, praise the Lord. And so um, every tree or every plant that bears fruit is a significant plant, you know, because, you know, God created the seeds so that they can perpetuate, you know, the, the same, same kind of that plant. And so any seed or any, any plant that does not yield any fruit is useless because it is not, you know, naturally it cannot be used, you know, to perpetuate the generations or, or, or rather the kind, the same kind of that plant. And so it is the same, same way, you know, when, when you think about bearing fruits as believers, praise the Lord. So when God saves us, when God, you know, um, um, redeems us and we become his sons, you know, he requires us to bear fruits, amen? And that's what we are gonna talk about today. So there are several references in the Bible where it talks about, you know, bearing fruit. And so we are gonna look into this and I know these are very common scriptures, but for the sake of our references, we are gonna, you know, briefly uh, check on them uh, so that we can remind of ourselves, you know, of what God is expecting us when we are talking about bearing uh, fruits or the necessity of a Christian bearing fruit, or what is it? What is it really? What does it really mean? Or what is the what is the, the significance of the Lord expecting us to bear fruit uh, uh, unto righteousness? So, in the book of Luke, chapter number eight, there is a, a the parable of the sower, and uh, this is this is my go-to scripture when I'm thinking about what God is speaking about um, about you know uh, the, you know the sower you know, about bearing fruit. And so in the book of Luke, uh, chapter number eight, the, uh, the fourth verse uh, the, to the fifth verse, this is what the Bible says. And when a great multitude had gathered, uh, okay. And, and when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. So he said, and as he saw it, some fell by the wayside, and it was struck down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and some, um, and as soon as it sprung out, it withered away because it lacked moisture or water. In verse number seven, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up with it and choked it. But others fell on the good ground, sprung up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, he who has ears, let him hear. Now the simple explanation about this parable, and I know you know this parable almost by, by your heart, is that the seed, the seed in this parable represents the word of God, praise God. So the word of God is the seed, praise the Lord, amen? So we know this, uh, the, the, the explanations of what you know, if you follow later, you know, we find that scripture tells us, um, trying up, finding a problem here with my paper, but let me get it situated. So um, the seed stands for the word of God, amen? And the seed that, uh, that fell on stony places, as the disciples, you know, asked Jesus, okay, so we don't understand this parable. So can you explain to us what this means? So Jesus explains to the, to the, to the disciples, and he tells them that the seeds, is the word of God, you know? So the seed that I'm talking about is represented by the word of God, amen. And the seed that fell on the stony places refers to those who hear the word and immediately receives it with joy, but they endure for a while, for when persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they, they fall away. So in this instance, we can see that it is not the potential in the word that fails to work, 
but it is the ground in which the, the seed falls into. Praise the Lord. So the, the seed has the, pot, the potential to grow, but the, if, the, if the soil is not, is, is not the right kind of soil, uh, then the seed is gonna have a problem to grow. And this is what is represented by the seeds that fell on the, on the stony places. And then Jesus continues to explain and he says, but the seed that fell among the thorns refers to those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the word such that they do not bear fruit. So again here, the potential in the seed doesn't, is constant. It doesn't change. So in other words, what we are learning here is that the word of God is potential. Amen? It has enough potential to cause effect if we have if it defines, if we are the ground that God expects us to be, praise the Lord. And so the question we are asking ourselves here today, what kind of a ground are we? Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. And then he continues, he says, uh, but the seed that fell on good soil stands for those who receive the word of God and understands it and bear fruit, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirty. So what this signifies is that as long as, because we are the ground, amen? And we are all kinds of different kinds of grounds, you know? And the seeds, just as a, this parable is speaking to us, when we read the word of God, the word of God, you know, is, 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 is as we say, is most powerful, it is, is powerful. And his, his power is constant. But when it comes into us, we, the soil, determines whether that soil, that seed is gonna grow, praise the Lord. And so if our ground is fertile enough, and if the, the seed fell on our fertile ground, the, the ground of our soul, then that seed has a potential to multiply. Now notice that the seed that fell on, th on the thorny ground, the seed that fell uh, on the rocky ground and on the, on the stone places, didn't even get a chance to grow and get to a point whereby it would bear fruit, praise the Lord. So there's a, there's, a, there's a danger here whereby if we allow the word of God to come into us and the ground is not ready, then we are not gonna bear much fruit, praise the Lord. So in other words, what, what this parable is, is reminding us, this parable is reminding us to really prepare our soil of our heart. The soil in our hearts will determine that when the word of God comes into us, that there's gonna be a bearing of some fruit, praise the Lord. And there's not, there's not only going to be the bearing of the fruit, but there's going to be a multiplicity of that seed. You know, some, the Bible says, some will be, it will be a 30-fold, uh, some, some 100-fold, and some 60. So there's going to be different levels of multiplicity and the bearing of, of the fruit, praise the Lord. Amen? Now, the good soil was only the soil that was able to bear fruit, and this is, we just I saw that it was able to bear fruit because it received the seed. The good soil could not bear fruit on its own, independent of the soil. So if you have a fertile ground without a seed, which is the word of God, there's not going to be any bearing of the fruit, praise the Lord. There will be a, com a, co a combination of a fertile ground and the seed of the word, which is the word of God, in order for us to bear fruit, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what are the kind of fruits um, are we talking about here? Now, we are talking about um, we are talking about forgiveness, for example. We are also talking about maybe being hospitable. Praise the Lord. When we talk about honesty, praise the Lord. Honesty could be also a kind of a fruit. Modesty. In fact, uh, in the Bible, it talks about the the five, the fruit of the of the Holy Spirit in the book of. Galatians 5:22 to 23. And we, we all know what, what, what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know it. There are the nine. There are nine of them. We have love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to know. Without a fertile ground and the word of God, the fruit of the spirit cannot be realized in us, amen? So we need the word of God and we need the right, the right type of soil in order to bring even the fruit of the, of the, of the spirit, in order for us to experience joy, 
in order for us to experience peace, in order for us to experience or to know what long suffering is, gentleness, goodness, faith and meekness and temperance, we need a combination of a good soil and uh, a good seed, which is the word of God, so that we can bear this fruit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's a danger here, and I would like us to check on something that I, I, I saw here. There is a bearing of the fruit and apostasy. I don't know whether you've heard this word apostasy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, what is apostasy? I'm going to define it. Apostasy is the act of refusing to continue to follow. Praise the Lord. Please listen to me because this is going to be very important. The act of refusing to continue to follow or, to, or to, to, you know, uh, to refusing to obey or refusing to recognize your faith. Praise the Lord. It is abandonment of a previous loyalty or defection. That is what is called apostasy. Praise the Lord. And I'd like you to walk with me here because there is a danger of us being disconnected if we don't bear much fruit. Now, remember, in order, remember, I want you to, uh, to have in your mind this, this, this idea that in order for me to bear fruit, the word of God has to be present, which is the seed. And then I also have to be, as, as a good ground, I, has to, I have to provide good ground in order for me to bear fruits. Amen? So I will determine whether I'll have productivity by the kind of soil I have in my heart. Praise God. So let us go back to apostasy. Amen. Now, there's a story that is told in the book of John 15. I am bringing scripture that we all know. Praise the Lord. The story of the true vine and the branches. Praise the Lord. And its branches. Now, in the book of John, the first two chapters, John 15, the first two chapters, the Bible says, Jesus speaks and he says, I am the true vine. Amen. And my father is the husband, he is the husband man or the gardener. He's the one who takes care of the garden. Praise the Lord. And then he continues to say that every branch in me that does not bear fruits, he takes away. Praise the Lord. Amen. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it or he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to know that Jesus is speaking of himself as the true vine, praise the Lord. And he says that as the true vine or the main trunk, which is Jesus, there are connected some branches. And he says that we as the children of God are those branches, praise the Lord. And Jesus being the true vine, he allows the branches to bear what? The fruit. But it says, those branches that are connected to me, to the vine, and they don't bear any fruit, it is the responsibility of my father to come and check out, you know, what is happening in this vine. And he says, if I find that there are branches that do not bear fruit, what does it do? He takes them away. In other words, he cuts them and throws them away. So what does this mean? that it is of necessity for us to bear much fruit because if we do not bear fruit, God intended for us. When he... And I'm gonna bring the meaning of the importance of bearing fruit and, and it's, it's gonna be so beautiful. And he says that if you do not bear fruit as a child of God, then you have of no use being connected to me as a vine because Jesus, provides the nourishment, listen to me, watch out this, he provides the nourishment to the branches, amen? But when the nourishment gets into the branches, the condition of the branch, the, the branch itself has to work its way out to absorb the nutrients from the vine and it, and it, and it bears that fruit. But you know what? It is the responsibility of that branch to bear that fruit. So if the branch refuses and he says, you know what? I am so caught up with the chores of this world. I am caught up, you know what? Because the branch actually that is still connected to the vine, notice it is connected to Jesus, amen? But it might be connected to Jesus, but it might be on a 
thorny, it might be on a, on a, thor, a thorny, a thorny branch, praise God, or a stony, a stony branch, you know, so to speak. And so remember the explanation that we had about the parable of the sower, you know, you remember what we were talking about there, right? That the seed that fell on the stony places refers to those who hear the word. It is not the problem of you hearing the word. It is not the problem that everybody can hear the word, amen? But those that fell on the stony places, the Bible says there are those who hear the word and immediately receive this with joy, but they endure for a while for when persecution arises. So we were talking about suffering and persecution last, last, last weekend, amen? So it is, is it is it godly for us to endure persecution, amen? Is it godly for us as children of God to endure persecution? The answer to that question is yes, praise the Lord. Because here we find out that when those seeds that fell on a stony places because of, 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 of when, when persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away, praise God. So we, are, we have to endure persecution in a good way so that we can, if we can stay long in that persecution and in the suffering that we may have to go through, then we shall be guaranteed that we, the word that we have, because it has potential, it will be able to bear fruit, praise be to God. Hallelujah. But many people, I would say this, that they hear the word of God, those people who are stony places, they will never bear any fruit unless they decide, you know what, no matter what, whether persecution will come, I will endure so that this, this seed that I have received can bear fruit, praise be to God. And in the same way, the seeds that fell in, into, the, into the stony, uh, stony, stony places refers to those who hear the word and immediately receives oh, uh, the, the, the seed that fell on the thorns refers to those who hear the word, but the cares of this world, praise the Lord. So it might be maybe the branch that is responsible to bear the fruit in John 15, back there, is so consumed with the cares of this world, praise the Lord. Amen. And it could be maybe the thorns, the thorny, the thorny area that is that is talked about in the parable of the sower, that the cares of this world and the deceitiveness of riches choke the word such that they do not do not bear fruit. Now, this is very critical, my beloved, and those who are watching me over, over Facebook and on, on the social media, that in the world today, there's so much competition about things that we want to chase after this, we want to chase after the other. And I'm not saying that it is it's bad for us to be ambitious, praise the Lord. But we can be overtaken by the pursuit of happiness and the pursuit of riches to whereby the cares of this world that I wanna compete with the Jones and I wanna drive the, you know, I wanna work as hard as I can in the expense of having, of having a relationship with God so that I can acquire all that the world will offer, amen? Notice what the Bible says. What does it benefit a man if he can gain the entire world and lose his soul, praise the Lord, amen? So, you know, we have to make a decision and ask ourselves, like when I was preparing this, I was asking, Lord, is there, are there areas in my life that are thorny whereby if, when in receipt of the word, you know, the cares of this world choke it out so that I'm, I may not bear, I mean, I may not be able to bear any fruit. I will ask my question, Lord, are there areas that are in my life that are so stony so that, you know, when, when, when because of persecution that will come as a result of the word, you know that I will not be able to bear much fruit, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Jesus says that he will provide the nourishment to the branches. But then there is the work of the Father. Listen to me. The work of the Father is to come and check out every vine to see whether this branch is not is producing. And if, if it is producing some fruit, you know what he does? He prunes it. You know, when you prune a plant, you give it more, you know, you give it more, uh, uh, more ability to yield even more fruit, praise the Lord. And so he is concentrating with the work of the branches and he checks out and he says, this branch is not producing and he yanks it away, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's an, another parable that talks about, um, let me see what I wrote here. It is the duty of each, of each branch to bear fruit such that if any branch fails to bear fruit, uh, he is, is counted as an unproductive, 
and is cut off and removed from the true vine. Praise the Lord. There is also the parable of the fig tree. Praise the Lord. The parable of the fig tree is found in the book of Luke 13, 6 to 9. Luke 13, 6 to 9. Look this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Verse number seven. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years. What does it, why does it use up the ground? But he answered, the one who kept the, um, I mean, the, the, the one who kept the vineyard, he answered and he said, but he, he answered and said to him, sir, let alone, let alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. Amen? And fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, it will be well. But if it does not, after that, you can cut it down. Now, what does that tell us? That God wants to give us another opportunity. Praise the Lord. You know, the fact that we may not be bearing fruit right now doesn't mean that, that God is going to be done away with you right now. We can cry out to God and tell him, God, may you help me so that I can be a fruit bearer. Praise the Lord. And this, the, the caretaker of this vineyard, he comes and tells the Lord, please, let us give this fig tree. I know for three years it has not been born any fruit. I know for three years it has stayed solitary without any help. Praise the Lord. But please give me one chance. Give me this year. I'm going to dig around it. In other words, I'm telling God, please, Lord, I may not have borne any fruit right now, but help me so that I can till my ground right now. Praise God. Give me this one year. Give me this one month. Give me this one week, Lord. Give me another opportunity. Give me a second chance, Lord. I know I have, I've, I've really ran away from the, from the things of God. And, uh, and I, uh, to be honest with you, uh, when the word of God comes into my life, I just hear it. And, and it is choked up by the persecution that, that is brought about by the word, Lord. Uh, I know I've been a thorny place for a long time, but Lord, I, I want to begin taking out the thorns away from my life. And I want to be, begin to feel around my ground of my heart. And, and I want to put some fertilizer on it. Please, Lord, give me a chance. The Lord said, well, I'll give you a chance. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so he said, sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And it is bears fruit. But if not, then you can come down and cut it. Amen. So you can see the owner of this vineyard is not interested to have this tree that he planted, this fig tree, if it doesn't bear any fruit. For the reason why he planted in the first place is so that he can get the figs, right? Praise the Lord. So the trees in the vineyard, it stands for us. Praise the Lord. And so the Lord every time comes to examine us. And when, when he is examining us, he is coming to realize or to find out if we are bearing fruit. Amen. And if we don't bear any fruit, that relationship is going to be severe. Praise be to God. Amen. And this parable of the fig tree, it, it resembles, you know, what we read in John 15. You know, that unfruitful Christian shall eventually ruin a relationship with God. There's no way we can be connected. We can say we are connected to God and not, and not bear any fruits. And if the word of God is true in John 15 and also in the book of Luke 13, then it says that, you know, what God is interested in us bearing fruit, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the seed is already available, praise God. The seed is already potential, praise God. The seed does not change. But what is a variable is us, praise God. What we need to work on, on, the, on the seed bearing is us, the fig. So the fig has to be dug around and maybe put some fertilizer on it and be given a chance by the Lord so that we can, we can, we can be able to bear much fruit, amen? So when we give our lives to Jesus. This is exactly what I want to talk about, you know, the beauty of forbearing fruit, okay? It is when we read scripture and when the ground is ready. Like, for example, when we go to the book of Matthew, chapter number five, verse number 44, okay? Matthew 5, 44. This is where it says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them 
which despitefully use you and persecute you. Having read this verse, what do you do? It doesn't fear, it doesn't appear like it is fair, but that is the word of God, you know? So if the ground is right, church, if the ground is fertile enough, the power in that word is potential enough to bring a change in your life, amen? And so when you begin to love your enemies, praise God, when you begin to pray for them, hallelujah, amen? <laughs> Are you getting what I'm trying to say? If you begin to, begin to love those that hate you, praise God, to pray for them that despise you and, and persecute you, amen? Then if you begin to do those things, then you're bearing fruit, amen? When the Lord comes and checks you out, he will realize, oh, my daughter wasn't doing this before, but the, but the moment he allowed that scripture to get into their system and into their heart, they are doing it right now, praise God. Do you know there are people still today, they are born again Christians, and they still hate those who hate them? Hello? There are people, I mean, naturally, I don't want to love anybody who is bent to persecute me. I don't feel like I want to be even in a relationship with anybody who is going to, who is bent, you know, to despise me, isn't it? But the word of God tells me the opposite. And so, so in order for me to bear fruit in that area, it is to take that word at the face value and say, Lord, my body and everything that is about me do not agree with this. As, as a matter of fact, I feel like I want to hit on this person. But because your word says so, and my ground is fertile enough, I am not only going to pray for them, but I'm going to love on them. And so when God can examine the vineyard, he is going to be pleased and you say, you know what? I found my daughter. I found my son to be productive and I am going to prune him so that even in other areas of my of his life, he is going to grow and develop more fruit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Another day you're going to go to maybe in the book of Matthew chapter number six, verse number 14. Okay, what does it say? For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Having read this, you've read this and you know, do we have people in the church that are still carrying unforgiveness to people that have wronged them? Hello? Are there people who hurt you and you, it is so hard. In fact, I met one, one person and you know, this is a born again believer connected to the vine, but they were hurt so bad by somebody. And that person told me, you know what? No matter what is gonna happen, I cannot forgive them. And this is a born again Christian. And let me tell you, there are Christians all over in the world who are like that. But you know, when we bear fruit is when we take that scripture on the face value and say, God, the whole system, the everything that this person did for me, I don't, I don't even want it. I don't even want to hear that I can forgive them. But just because your word, your word tells me to forgive them, then Lord, I surrender. I surrender to the counsel of your word. I surrender, Lord, and I. And, and, I, and as difficult as it, is, as it is, because your word tells me so, and I believe that your word is a powerful seed, Lord, I completely forgive them. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, when God is coming in the business of checking out the, his vineyard, we are his vineyard. Praise the Lord. Me and you make, you know, make our parts, our part, you, 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 we are the plants, we are the branches, and Jesus is the vine, and, and God himself, the Father, comes to re-examine us. And, you know, he comes and checks me out and says, Tony, huh, you're saying that you're bearing fruit. How about so-and-so? Three years ago, he really messed you up, and I still see in your heart that you're still holding it, you know? How long are you going to hold this burden? How long are you going to carry the heart in your heart? How long are you going to carry this bitterness that you hold against this person? I have already released your word. And then when I realize it, I'll tell the Lord, Lord, help me so that I can till my ground around that area. And when the ground is well tilled, praise the Lord, give me an opportunity, Lord. Give me a month, Lord. Give me two months, Lord. Give me about three months. I'm going to work on it. Amen. And the moment I expose myself to the counsel of the Holy Spirit, guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to help me so that I can till around that area. And no sooner that burden, the heart is going to melt away. Why? Because the word of God is coming to knock down that heart 
and I'm going to release them. I'm going to say, Lord, I have victory now. I forgive them and I have victory now. I do no longer carry them. I no longer have this heartache in my heart. I have released them, Lord. And the Lord is going to come and, and Lord and say, there you go, my son. You've done good. Well done and faithful servant. That is what bearing fruit is, praise God. It is allowing the word to do what you cannot do by yourself. Praise be to God. Are you getting blessed? Another day you're going to go into the book of, um, into the book of, of Matthew 28, 19. Okay? And this is what the Bible says. Go therefore uh, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, Matthew 28 is a scripture that tells us about reaching out. You know, the other day I realized, I think we were talking, my wife and I, and I think, uh, I don't know who, who we were with, and we were talking, you know, the other, I realized how easy that in order, if you want to reach out somebody and tell them about the gospel, you know, tell about tell somebody about the gospel, all you have to do is be friendly. Amen? You'll be so surprised. And so I, told, I begin to ask God, God, help me to be friendly. I think, okay, what happened is, I remember the story, is, um, is one of the, our neighbors, you know, the daughter was graduating. And, uh, you know, you know I, don't, I don't know how many of you keep on knocking on the doors of your neighbors, trying to see how they are doing. Some of us, you know, we live with neighbors we have not even spoken to. Amen. Hello, can I get, can I get a, a witness? You know, sometimes you don't even know your neighbor. And so my wife is speaking to this lady. I think they had gone just to, to, to chat and they said, oh, my husband is Tony. Oh, and then he said, oh, that Tony? Oh, he looks like he's so, uh, what is his word he said? He looked like he's so reserved. And I said, oh my God. <laughs> he looked like he's so reserved because you know, sometimes we don't talk to people. You know, we can look at people and say, maybe they don't even want to talk to me. You know, and I, No, I have to be really reserved. I can, I can be friendly to people. And so uh, one of these, the other day, I think, I, I cannot remember who I talked to. I, I, I give you so many stories. But I, I had an opportunity to, to talk to, oh, I, I think I was talking to the, your friend who is a homeless lady. And I, you know, we were, I became a Christian. You know, sometimes I love America. I love this nation. Strike a conversation with you at any given time. It could be maybe in an elevator. It could be maybe maybe in Walmart. It could maybe maybe it, well, that is a conversation starter. And you know what? As you keep on going, you realize you can share your life story with them and tell them about Jesus. Can you think about when Jesus comes and sees that we have never witnessed to anybody? Amen. The Lord wants us to be a witness for Him here on earth. Amen. And so when he's coming in the, into the vineyard and finding you friendly and willing to share your, 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 your good news or the gospel with people, he realizes that you're bearing fruit in that area. Amen. Okay. What, where did he start? From the word of God. Amen. Remember, the word of God is a constant. Hallelujah. I'm going to be winding up here in a few minutes. Uh, maybe you went to the book of Ephesians. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians 6.18, Ephesians 6.18, there are so many, you know, the scripture, the scripture is God's, God inspired. And let me tell you, if we go into the promises of God, you'll be amazed at, at, at how many instructions there are that we can benefit and we can fruit bear us just by the word of God. Amen. In the book of Ephesians 6.18, the Bible says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. See, see the good, the beauty about the word of God when it, it comes to you, you can place yourself in what it says. And then I can ask myself, do I really pray for all the saints? When was the last time I took a break just to pray and intercede for other believers? You know, so am I bearing fruit in that area? Amen. And these are questions that we need to answer ourselves, you know. So am I really, do I always pray? Do I have a set time whereby I have a 
a long time with God, and I go, it could be maybe a closet, it could be in an office, it could be maybe a space that you've set aside in your home, whereby this 15 minutes, this beginning 15 minutes of the, the last 15 minutes of the day, I am, I am doing nothing else but having time of prayer and conversation with my Lord. Amen. So when God is in the process of coming to see whether we are bearing fruit in that area, are we bearing fruit in that area? And maybe we can tell God is saying, why are you not bearing fruit? Why I haven't had, I haven't received any prayer for saints from you in about a month. I see like you have stopped bearing fruit in this area. And we can tell God, please give me a month. Give me two months. Give me three months. I'm going to work on it. Amen. I will allow this word because it has the potential in itself to till around my ground in that area. Pull off the thorns. Pull off the stones from that, from that area and, and put fertilizer on that. And I'm going to start working on it. Amen. It is going to be intentional. Lord, I am going to be intentional. Lord, I'm going to start by 10 minutes. I'm going to start, I'm going to give you five minutes. And let me tell you, the moment you begin, the moment you make the first step, five minutes will go into seven minutes. Seven minutes will build into 10 minutes. 10 minutes will build into 15 minutes. You know, sometimes you say, oh, you know what, Pastor Tony, I don't even have much. I don't even have time for anything else. Let me tell you, if God will switch off your switch today. Would you really have time? Do you know that God has the master switch and he can switch your operations right now? Hello, everybody. Do you know if God says that you're not going to go to work tomorrow, you want, you're not going to go to work? Do you know if God says that you're not going to work those two doubles, he can yank that one job away from you? Then why would we not even have at least 15 minutes just between us? Because he longs for our fellowship. Amen. Amen. So are we bearing fruit in that area? Praise God. Now, the Bible says that if you honor God, he will honor you back. That is a powerful seed. Amen? So just examine yourself. On these things that we are talking about, it is taking the phrase in the scripture and asking ourselves, Lord, how am I doing? How am I, can I judge myself? How am I honoring you? Am I honoring you with my resources? Am I honoring you with my time? Am I honoring you, Lord, with with my body? Am I honoring you with my thoughts? Am I honoring you, Lord, God? You say that if if I honor you, you honor me back. Lord, how am I bearing fruit in as far as honor is concerned? Amen? Or do I have thorns in that area of my life so that when the word honor comes, you know, and I'm in a thorny place, it is choked out by the cares of the word so that I am compolluted and I'm not, I'm not able to honor you enough with my time. I'm not able to honor you with my money. I'm not able to honor you with my body. I'm not able to honor you because of the cares of this world. I am so confronted and saturated in the cares of this world that honoring you is at the back burner. It is that right there at the bottom of the list. At the moment we say, Lord, I'm going to. He's coming to examine the, the, the vineyard. He's going to say, oh, my son, my daughter, I, I see for sure. I, in spite of all the things that you're going through, you're still honoring me. I can see you honoring me with your time. I can see you honoring you with your finances. I can see you regarding me as, as your king and Lord and savior. I can see the honor. I can tell it. You know, God cannot be moved. We cannot say that we are honoring God and then and then and we cannot we cannot pretend like we are honoring God and think that we are honoring him. He knows what is in the heart. Amen. He knows when we are honoring him. Amen. Praise God. You know, one thing I've determined, I was asking myself, sometimes you know, we struggle with so many things, and I know most of us struggle like maybe with time management. You know, when it comes maybe like even to, to go to, to attending meetings, maybe for the church or coming to church early, I told, I told God, God, if there's one thing I want to honor you, I want to go to your house on time, Lord. Because I, I don't fail to go in other places. As a matter of fact, if I, if I say I'm going to meet with you at a certain point, I'm getting late, it really bothers me, to be honest with you. If I'm saying that we are going to meet at three o'clock and I'm not there, you know, it, it, it kind of like shows how I disrespect you because I'm not there at three o'clock. Can you imagine if you said 
that you're going to meet at three o'clock and somebody doesn't it shows up like one hour later? Don't you feel like defiled? I mean, for real, let's talk about it. Don't you feel like, why did this three o'clock, but he is not even here. You know, maybe I had other things that were scheduled after three o'clock and the meeting was supposed to be, be say for 15 minutes, amen. I believe that if we can honor AFMI requirements, we can also honor God with our time, amen. And I hear hello, amen, somebody. Amen, can we hear hello? Amen. Can you imagine if the pastor, as your pastor comes here, like say 11, and you come here and you find that our pastor Tony is not even here, if the captain is not here, what's going on? I'm sure you're gonna pick up the phone and try to call me. What's going on, pastor? You're not in church on time. How about if we can reverse those other things the other way around? I come here and there's no one, surely, like we were struggling in the morning here with the sound system. Suppose you come here like 9.30, imagine. Maybe you could have helped us. Okay, I don't wanna get you on a guilt trip. On a, by the way, I, I didn't even plan to say that. But I'm saying what I'm trying to say, we can bear fruit even in every area of our lives in terms of honor, honoring God maybe with our money. How are we spending our money? Do we get our paycheck and we go to the malls and buy everything? There is uncontrollably, and we forget about maybe even supporting maybe a poor person somewhere, maybe a widow or somebody who is in need. Amen? Can we ask ourselves, am I honoring you, Lord? Amen? Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Amen. Amen. So the product of, of, of a seed growing, the product of a, of a fruit bearing, what is the product of this of fruit bearing? So when we are doing all these things, what are you noticing here? As you get to do, as you get to honor God, as you get to pray, as you get to give faithfully, as you get to honor God with your time, what are you realizing here? Somebody, what are you realizing? Huh? You're bearing fruit, but what else are you gaining? Amen? When you're, when you're practicing forgiveness, when you're practicing humility, when you're practicing chastity, love, mercy, self-control, what are you practicing? Yes, you're becoming holy, praise the Lord. Amen? When the Lord is coming and finding you, say, oh, my son, this, you have, I, you're blameless. Because when, I, when I'm finding you, you're forgiven those who have hurt you. You're loving those, they're unlovable. You're even honoring me. The Lord looks at you and says, oh, I have a good testimony regarding you. So bearing fruit helps us to be holy. Are you getting it? Amen? So holiness results from fruit bearing, and fruit bearing results from obedience. So you find that even when we are bearing fruit, as we continue to do the word, what are we doing? We are obeying the word. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are quenching ourselves. Uh, and we, when we can do this, we can do this by not separating ourselves in the word of God. You know what? I told you, I've told you many times, and I'm, I'm concluding right now. I had this guy, you know, back in our church, you know, back in the day, who would come and brag that he has read the Bible 10 times. But you know, he had read the Bible 10 times, but when I looked into what his life really, you know, uh, whether that, you know, his life had been changed by the 10 times he had read the Bible, he was the one using bad language. He was the one who could actually verbally abuse you. He was the one who could warn you, yet he had read the Bible 10 times. So it is better even five, read, just read five scriptures, church, five scriptures, Act on them and be obedient in those scriptures and bear fruit in those scriptures. And then you'll proceed on because the word, it, as, the, as the Bible says, the word is sweeter than honey. Praise the Lord. So the word will continue being sweeter as honey as you continue. If you get five scriptures and you say, Lord, this week, I'm just concentrating on these five scriptures. I want to practice forgiveness. I want to practice honoring you. I want to practice prayer. I want to practice, you know, a study of the word of God. I want to practice allowing the Holy Spirit to read, to lead me five things. Lord, help me. Let, let me. let me bear fruit in these areas. Let me bear fruit in these areas. And next week, I'm going to repeat, do and repeat. Next week, I'll do and repeat. Before you know it, you'll be honoring God with all that you do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Finally, I'm going to ask you this. Food for thought. Are you a bearing fruit 
Are you bearing fruit as a Christian? Amen. If not, what should you do now to bear fruit based on this scripture? Amen. How are you prepared even to bear fruit so that this fruit can bear other seeds that will, that will just like in the plant, that will affect many other generations? Amen. Are we preparing to bear fruit in the areas of reaching out to others and sharing the gospel to other people by being friendly to them? Amen. We can do this, church. We can become friendly. And the more we become friendly, then other people will be attracted to us by our friendliness. Amen. Let us not like that, that lady who said that I am reserved. I don't want people to say that I'm reserved. I want people to say that I'm outgoing, I'm friendly, and I can share anything with them. Amen. As we do so, then we are going to be able to identify things that are going on in people's lives. The other day I was uh, in my time, I'm, I'll say this story and I close. And because of this, what I've been saying, I'll start practicing. I'm changing my tire and there, there comes a guy and uh, I saw him, you know, eating a burger and I'm like, I saw just a, a few minutes ago, he was munching another burger. And you know, you know, the tendency for me would be maybe I'll just leave him alone because you know, I don't know why he's eating, I mean, back to back, two burgers at a go. So I said, hey man, how does that burger sound? So I, I'm going to him and he says, oh man, you know, I've just smashed six, <laughs> he said, I've just smashed six, six Big Macs right now. He was a big guy. So I said, okay, why are you eating like that? He said, I just love them. So I said, I asked him, so do you eat like this every day? So anyway, we started a conversation. And from that conversation, I knew that he was a dishwasher. And, you know, he started telling me about how he has been let down more by, so I, I started now seeing the things that he's going through. He's eating because he's been rejected. As a matter of fact, when I was talking to him, he couldn't even look at me in the eye because he felt like anybody, I don't think he has ever, ever struck a conversation. And as I, as I left him, because I was just done, I didn't even have much conversation with him. I said, may God bless you. And, and you know what? I went carrying that man uh, in my heart to pray for him because he has been rejected. He's been ostracized by life. Praise God. What if I just decided I'm not going to inquire about anything? Would I go with his burden maybe to pray for him? Maybe through prayer that I've prayed for him and maybe others, maybe you get his deliverance. Praise God. So God has sent us out into the world to be, um, uh, to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth. Let us be friendly to people. Let us know what is happening in people's lives. That is why we are here on earth, to be God's extended hands. Praise God. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because uh, today, the necessity of bearing fruits. We have found out that when we bear fruits, Lord, that it will lead to, to being holy. It will lead to obeying your word. I pray, Lord, in, in areas that we all struggle. There are certain areas when we, the, the areas could be different for different people. Lord, I pray that you shall give us an opportunity to make it right and help us, Lord, even to surrender before your presence, just like the parable in the fig tree where the caretaker asked you, give, give him one more ear to see whether if he would cultivate on the tree, whether it would bear fruit, Lord. Father, thank you for sending Jesus and, and he is the vine and he provides nourishment to the branches. I pray that we shall be branches that yield fruit, O oh Lord, and so that these fruits can be a source of a, a vitality to other people who come to us in the name of Jesus. And as the world awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God, it is this hanging fruits from us that they will come and taste and they will hear the goodness of God. Father, when we speak to people, let them see here the fruit of the spirit of God in our lives. They'll hear love, they'll hear meekness, they'll hear long suffering, Lord. Father God, there'll be forgiveness in our lives as we bear fruits in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus. Satan, you cannot come to interfere with our seed, with our, with our fruit bearing process. In the name of Jesus, we take final authority against you. You who come even to place thorns in our ground, you who comes to plant stones on our ground. We command you right now, pick up all your belongings and flee in the name of Jesus. You can never interfere with our fruit bearing life right now because that is exactly what God wants us to, to be. Fruit bearing believers. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Father.
For it is in Jesus' precious name that we pray and believe. Everybody said amen. Amen. Can we appreciate God for his word? Amen. Brother Albert, please come and help me out here. Amen. God bless you so much. Let us be believers that bear much fruit in Jesus' name.